Hey guys, I'm joined with Keja Tally. She's a uh, track athlete at Purdue University. She is my Neo, my Soror, Zeta Theta. <laughs> How are you? I'm good. How are you? Good. I, man, I was just talking about your resume and your athleticism, your work, your hustle, your grind, a lot of things that you've gotten into at such a young age, um, have some things in common, uh, both born in Michigan she was born in Dearborn, grew up in the Indianapolis area, but I'm from, I was born in Detroit. So for those of you who don't know, that's like Indianapolis to Fisher is pretty much, that's the best way to explain it. Um, or either in this case where I'm located now, like Baton Rouge and like a suburb or something like that. Yeah. So, but yeah, so <laughs> thank you for coming on. We just want to chop it up with you and talk about um, your success and how you got into track um, the journey going from, you know, being a child and transitioning into a college athlete at a Big Ten school and just your experience. Um, but that would be my first question. How did you get into track and field? What inspired you to pursue track and field? Yeah, so growing up, I just been like, like an all-around athlete. My first sport was soccer, and I really wanted to go through with that. And then uh, I have a twin brother and a younger sister. And they started playing basketball. And I was like, oh, let me try basketball. Uh, I became really good at basketball. Uh, was playing basketball starting fresh uh, starting freshman on varsity uh throughout uh from my freshman year to high school uh so that was that and I've always like loved to run and so I just like hey let me go for the track team too so I'm just like an all-round athlete growing up so I just did every sport that I could and uh I realized that I had a talent in track and field uh, along with basketball Mm -hmm. uh, so then in high school, I was doing both. I uh, won a state championship in basketball my sophomore year. Mm -hmm. uh, I got like six rings in track and field for high school. So I've done like a lot of work uh, <laughs> at Warren Central. And it was time to choose which, uh, which I'm, I'm going to go to college for. Um, and I ended up getting a full ride at Purdue University. And so I took that, you know, went where the money was. Uh, they were hey. <laughs> Where the yeah. money reside, gotta go. Money reside, like so. Um, they recruited me off my 300 hurdle time. Uh, I was uh, second in the state of Indiana, so I got recruited really well for that. My teammate, uh, well, my former teammate, she went to Purdue too, who had beat me. She was a senior and I was a junior. Mm -hmm. Uh, so I got recruited off my junior. I didn't have a senior year. Came in during as a COVID baby, so um, <laughs> that was that. You really didn't get to have my senior year, but it's mm -hmm. okay. We'll keep track and field. Um, but yeah, I got recruited off of that and um, I've been loving it so far. I, I, we have similar backgrounds. I definitely started with the basketball and the track. Uh, by the time when I switched high schools, I was at Warren Township High School in Illinois and I moved mm -hmm. to Merrillville. When I got there, basketball just wasn't working out for me. I don't know. I think I just like lost hope because, you know, when you have a gelling team, a team that gels together and meshes well, we had just won to our conference and everything like that. And then my mom moved me and my mom didn't understand like basketball and track work different. Like it's a team sport and your team, you got to click for basketball versus track. It's the same thing. It's a team sport, but it's more individual, you know, right. track. So yeah, I kind of dropped basketball. My uh, coming out of my sophomore year, going to my junior, and just focused on track. But yeah, no, you're way more talented than me than I was at at track and field. Um, so what's your experience been like? Just balancing, you know, classes, and you know, you're at a Big Ten school, so it's like a job, pretty mm -hmm. much. Um, you don't have time to do anything else but to eat, sleep, track, and school. Yeah, uh, so I'm pretty much up from sun up to sundown. Uh, I have weights Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 7 a.m. And then classes in between, try to find some wiggle room to eat. Uh, fortunately, like, I'm glad that we have, uh, like, cafe areas where we can just go and sit down as athletes to go eat in between classes and go through my classes, find time to do some homework. We have a great um, academic program here, and especially for the student athletes, uh, we have a building called Breeze where we can go in and do our homework, eat and just going about our business and then have practice in the afternoon, have practice around two, three o'clock, practice about two, three hours, depending on what we're doing. And after that, solo, go to the training room, get some, uh, uh, let's call it treatment, recovery, and then just repeat the cycle the next day. So just like, you know, like balancing all that is really, you gotta have your schedule. And we have academic advisors who are there to make sure that we're on top of our things, homework, classes, um, even practice, making sure we're, our well being is good, so. Yeah. But you you were we were just talking a moment ago and you were telling me um 
like me, you started working at a young age. You started working around 15, 16. We were both talking about we were working these, uh, quote unquote, what people consider to be masculine jobs. You worked in a warehouse. I was talking about working at Menards. So did that like starting work at an early age and playing sports and going to school, did that kind of help you get in a routine or being able to manage and balance, you know, at a young age? Did this help you for college and what you're doing now? Yeah, it definitely did. Um, it just made me um, like realize what I have to put in. Uh, so starting like working at a young age, just like uh, taught my motor skills on how to like time management um, and just being more organized. So working at a young age definitely helped me benefit myself throughout, uh, you know, working at a young age, high school and in college. And then on top of that, the obvious, I, I see it in the background. <laughs> You also uh, recently crossed, how, do you, how does that feel, you know, to reach another one of your uh, milestones in your life and a, another major accomplishment, adding something else to the picture? Because like a lot of people may think it's just an organization, it's just sorority, it's just Delta, but it's a lot of work that goes into it. Um, so how, how was that? First of all, how's the experience? And then how is it on top of everything else that you have going on? Yeah, the experience is so great. Um... I, I really worked hard to become a Delta and uh, I recently just came back from my first national convention and I loved it. It was a great experience. And it's <laughs> yes, a lot of it looks fun. <laughs> I'm really, I'm really glad to be part of a huge organization, a beautiful organization at that and uh, balancing all that with track, uh, my academics and just my personal life. Again, just knowing like, you just got to have a schedule, like having a schedule is so important being a, co a collegiate athlete and then um, becoming a Delta. What would you say was the biggest challenge for you in just balancing the two or for somebody that might be considering, you know, joining a Greek organization, but maybe they feel like they can't because they're an athlete? Like, what was the biggest challenge that you overcame or that you would use to inspire somebody who was looking to go like a similar route? Yeah, all, all I can say is like my mom, she always told me like God can never give you too much that you can't handle. So you just have to know yourself and just know your personnel. Um if you know something might be too much for you, you know, just you just got to look into it, uh, even write it out like the pros and cons of going to it. But uh, at the end of the day, just like stay strong and know, like stick to your roots. Recently went to Big Ten Conference um, and I, I did catch some of that. <laughs> they normally have all the TVs on when I'm in the gym. So what was that like just competing on such a high level um, with such a large audience watching you, um, what was that experience like? What was that thought process? Were you nervous? You know, I know you've accomplished so much on a statewide level at Warren Central, but what was it like in, on a college level? Yeah, so like on a college level, at a national level, it's so nerve wracking because when you come into like from high school, it's like you're like, oh, you know, you're the best coming out of your class. Like you're jumping to a pool where it's like it's not just you. It's a whole bunch of athletes like that are just like you and some athletes that a little bit better than you. So uh, <laughs> well, competing at Big Tens, it was it's always nerve wracking. I'm going into my senior year and I'm always nervous when I line up. But, you know, I've been training this what I worked for. So I just got to go up, show there and show out. So. Now I have to ask women, well, not just women, just the, let's talk about the sport of track and field first. Um, do you feel like this sport maybe gets overlooked in comparison to other sports, even, even at a big 10 school? Do you think like track and field kind of gets put on a back burner a little bit? Yeah, it, I think it definitely does. Uh, people just be like, oh, track, all you're doing is running. I was like, some people couldn't even come out here and do half the stuff that we do. Like, you can't even make it through practice. But yeah. track is definitely overlooked. It's definitely more than just running. It's a lot of mechanics, skills, uh, a lot of, like, some natural ability. And recovery is, like, super heavy in track and field because you're constantly going to be on your feet. You got your shins, hamstring, quads, all that going into motion all the time. So I definitely think track and field is definitely overlooked. It's actually a fun sport to watch because nowadays these athletes are out here running impossible times that like yes. the athletes would have never thought would be broken. Like records are getting broken left and right. So it's what would, you, can so what would you like to see from the community or like just the people in terms of uh, getting more support and people to tune in and stuff like that? Um, just just supporting it really uh i know here at purdue our track meets are for free like we can't fund there a you track go meet. Man, they're, they're having the audience come in for free and that's like that's how you know people don't really like to watch track and field because the only way they're trying to bring people in is like if you're making it for free so they're like oh you know there's a free meal let me just go check it out right Whatever. but compared to like football and basketball they're like uh charging top dollar and people are paying for it i just 
I, it needs to be a balance in between there. It can be like five bucks, something. Right. But just getting the word out that, you know, track and feel like it's a tough sport, it's a serious sport, and it's very competitive. Now, do you feel like, um, let me ask you about the NIL deals. Uh, your thoughts on that, you know, now students are eligible. Um, if you don't mind me asking, are you an NIL student? No, I'm not. Okay, so do, do you feel like students get overlooked sometimes um, just for, for that same reason, track and field? You're not like one of the, the footballs, the basketballs, those major sports that people watch. Do you feel like you guys get overlooked for opportunities like NIL deals compared to other um, athletes? Definitely, yes and no. Um, yes, because... For track, it feels a little different. It's kind of hard. If, in my opinion, I think everything is politics. Okay. So it's athletes that are in that one percentile. Mm -hmm. And only like, I feel like the huge NIL uh, deals go to that one percent. And um, it's really just like showcasing their brand. And I feel like any athlete, regardless if you're like the number one person in NCAA uh, or, or regardless of that, um, I just feel like everything is pretty much politics. And like when it comes to football and basketball, um, one of my friends, he hoops at uh, 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 at my uh, the University of Miami, and he got an NIL deal, and they bought him a car. They like bought him a car and, and added over, I think, mm, like fifty k mm -hmm. for him to go there. And that was an NIL deal on top of the scholarship. And so I just feel like, dang, I, I wish I had the opportunity. Right, right. Like, yeah, he's good, but. <laughs> You know, it's just small things like that. You know, track and field athletes, like, we're just promoting, like, waters or energy drinks and stuff like that. Like, they're promoting these top branded companies. And I don't know. It's just it's just politics to all of that. Like, when it comes to the sports, the athlete in the school and the universities and all that. So, yeah. Do you personally know anyone at Purdue that has NIL uh, deals? Mm, I do. I just can't think of okay. it right now. Yeah. So, like, how does it make, you know – how does it make you feel just knowing that you guys work just as hard like you just said you guys are just as great you guys perform you guys are still you know even when it comes to media attention I feel like like you said recently I would say more so if I had to put a number on it maybe the last five years or so people have really started paying a track and field again pay attention yeah. to it and part of that I do think um the Shakari Richardson situation kind of played a part in that a little bit um but it's, it takes moments for stuff like that to happen for people to even somewhat pay attention. So, you know, do you, how do you feel when you know that you're working hard, but you still kind of like feel overlooked by the public or do you even feel like that, you know, or do you, or does it not bother you just grind it out? And, you know, it is what it is. I'm doing what I love. Like what yeah. kind of energy do you have towards it? Yeah. I'm just grinding out and doing what I love. Um, I feel like track and field is like an underdog sport. Like they know we can get active and we do get active, but it does take a, a major, like a major event or somebody else to like, it has to take that small little spark just so it can get somebody's attention. And then it just spreads from there. But it's just crazy how we have to do something so outrageous just to get a little bit of media attention. Do you feel like you faced any challenges just as like a woman as well, like in athletics or not really, um, you know, when it comes to competing or competing with the guys? I know sometimes it could be like competitive in that way, even though you guys don't necessarily run together, but, you know, on um, you guys playing the same sport, you know? Um, honestly, nah, I think uh, women uh, track and field athletes, I feel like women low key get a little bit more recognition than men because. <laughs> women are running like, they're running they, like they're running yes. like, <laughs> they're running like men like it's crazy it's a lot of uh like pros that are running what like collegiate guys are running well some mm -hmm. collegiate guys are running and it's just like it's ridiculous like comparing men to women but the whole time it's kind of like on equal skills that's crazy because I remember in back in high school we would try to look at the they used to post our times after each meet we always try to like even though like back then we weren't touching the guys but we were trying to get as close as we could yeah. to the guys because you run uh four by four which who lord i hated that race um the 400 so that's a 400 for it's a relay race for those who don't know and then she hurdles talk about that hurdling how did you get into hurdling like i oh i feel like <laughs> i feel like out of all pole vaulting and hurdles i gotta give y'all y'all props I long jump, but it's nothing like jumping over something at that speed, you know. Talk about what made you get into hurdling. 
Yeah, so crazy story, actually. Uh, I never really wanted to hurdle. Um, in high school, uh, again, I played basketball, so I was super athletic. I can jump, high vertical, all of that. I really wanted to do long jump or high jump. Mm -hmm. And all my coach team was my legs. She said, yep, legs. And hey. I was trying to do hurdles. I was just like, oh, okay, sure. Like, I'm going to do it. I'm, I'm a natural athlete. I'll go do whatever and I became good at hurdling and she was like you know what we're just gonna train for that and you're gonna get a scholarship oh, and so wow. that from high school to college uh, it's been really fun and I love hurdling like it's <laughs> I just love it it's definitely tough uh so I run the 400 hurdles mm -hmm. and that hurdles around the whole track <laughs> and that's very tough uh is that I was gonna say so like <laughs> <laughs> How do you train for that? Or where, at what point in the race do you feel like you get the, the, the most tired? Like you start to weaken out? Like, is it at the 300 mark? Cause that's at least from when I ran the 400, just without the hurdles, I would get tired like between that 300 and 400 mark. Yeah, it's definitely the 300 mark. Uh, I'm more of a type, I'm the type of person who like gives it all you got. And then if you mm -hmm. got no more, just, that's just, it. Up. Yeah, because I don't know. Uh, I try to work tempo, but I definitely get tired around the 300 mark or at least slow up a little bit because I've kind of pretty much burnt all yeah. my energy in the first half. But training for the 400 hurdles is really tough. You got to run past 400 meters in practice just so you can keep that endurance and keep the strength. Mm -hmm. And then hurling on top of that, that's just. It takes a lot of concentration. It takes a lot of concentration. It's been a lot of time in practice where I, I don't fail. I done mentally like gave up all of that, but you just gotta, you just gotta keep going. Like you're I, was, I was getting ready to ask you that. Cause like, it's very rare that you, most times if you're falling a, a regular race, I guess falling over a hurdle might be the equivalent of missing an exchange with a baton or something like that. Like just that feeling of knowing that you did that. So have you ever uh, like took a tumble fall in a race and um, <laughs> like, did it mess you up mentally? Did you get back up? Was that like, like, what was that experience like for you? Yeah, so uh, my freshman year, I remember it too. <laughs> my very first track, my very first open 400 meters, uh, 400 meter hurdle, it was at IU. And I'm running, I, I'm at the like the 220 mark mm -hmm. on the curve and I fell and I hit the hurdle. And I was like, dang, I was in front of everybody too. I felt mm -hmm. like a, I felt a PR coming. The only part that hurt was that I knew I wasn't going to be able to finish. Yeah. 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 Uh, so I didn't feel a lot. I fell at uh, track knees. I fell at practice. I have a huge scar on my shin, but it didn't really hurt. Though. I just, I'm a tough person. I'm really motivated. I know myself. I always get back up. What they say, what they say, knock me down 10 times, get back up, or whatever the saying is. <laughs> you always got to bounce back. Bounce back. I always bounce back. So what is next after school? I know you talked about going into environmental science um, for a career wise, but is it your dream to go pro or maybe go overseas and run? Or is, are you done after this? Are you still thinking about it? What do you want to do after, after Purdue? Uh, yeah. So after, I ain't gonna lie. I'm hanging <laughs> up. <laughs> hanging I'm, it up. Okay. I'm hanging it up, but I don't know. It's just, Track and field is really like a wear and tear. And I definitely give credit for those who've been running since they were a little kid and then uh, that are pro right now or want to uh, go pro after college. Track and field is really not easy, honestly. And it's definitely a wear and tear on your joints, uh, your lower half of your body, all of that. But I think for me, like basketball is my true sport. I love basketball. I love track and field too. But mm -hmm. I think I'm just hanging up, honestly. Um, mm -hmm. I still have goals that I want to uh, complete uh, here at Purdue. I'm going for the 400 meter hurdle record. So, oh, get it this year. Um, we're gonna put, speak that. We're gonna claim that. Put that in the atmosphere. It's like I'm so I'm I'm close to it. The uh the 400 hurdle record is 56 flat. And my PR is 57.4, so Ooh, I think okay. I can get it this year. Um, I've been really grinding it out. And then um, after college, um, depending on how my internship goes, um, I definitely want to stay locked in with um, EHS. Okay. Wow. I'm, I'm, I hope to see it. So does that mean you get like your name on like one of the flags up there? Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'll be in the history books. Be in the history book. I know that's right. We're going to speak that into existence. Um, so what gets you hype and motivated before a track meet? I got to ask, what's the top five songs on your playlist? Give me a top five. Or which top five songs you listening to right now? Yeah, so uh, let me see. I know I listen to, I was a Detroit artist, so I'm listening to okay. Real Young. He gave me lit every single time. I listen to Real Young, Lil Durk. Um, I listen to Moneybag Yo. Okay, I like Moneybag Dirt. Uh, who 
what else do I listen to? Mm, just whoever, really. I just love listening to like rap, honestly. Mm -hmm. uh, something that's like upbeat gets me motivated. Upbeat. Yeah. So wait, I gotta ask you too. What's the, what's your uh? You know how everybody when you get to the to the line, everybody getting ready to get in their blocks. You know what you doing? Cause I know I've been next to the people that are jumping up and down, they woo, 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 doing all yeah, that. Yeah, doing too much. <laughs> like, what's uh -huh. your go to? You know, what, you do do you do anything outrageous? Mm, no, nah, I just really keep it simple. I go up to the line. I do do something petty though. Okay. So whenever I'm on the line, especially like on the straight line, whenever we're all like right next to each other, you know, some people like walk out a little bit. I walk out. I walk like a good. Oh, uh, I used to be like, where are they going? I'd be like, yeah, I look, look to my left, look to my right, just, and then, um, I know, do a couple high knees mm -hmm. and then down, you know, look back up and then get back into the blocks, look up one more time. Just so I can be there. Make sure, I make sure I'm the last one to block. Yeah, I used to do that. I like, oh, I sit in the blocks for too long. Because either I can, yeah. I like, so I'm like, no, I need to stay locked in. But I try to make sure I'm the last person in the blocks. So I definitely kind of petty with that. And I always do keep you, like a open face. Do you think people like do that, like to to be a way to be petty and talk mess and everything? You know, like you know, <laughs> your way to show off and flex. Some, some, a uh, little bit, yeah. I know. So you know, like in basketball, people talk trash under the hoop. You can't really do that. So, like, I feel like sometimes coming in the blocks is like, you know, you yeah, not talking, but girl, like, uh, next to she was like smacking her face, ooh, 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 like smacking her whole body. I'm just like, oh my girl, you got me because I, I don't know. <laughs> right, right. Like, you distracted me for real, for real, because you yeah. got him, like, When that girl started, like, howling, barking, I'm just, that threw me off. It. I was like, girl, like, chill, chill out. Like, you just want the attention, for real. Man, well, thank you so much um, for ch chatting with me, chopping it up with me. Uh, dope, talented athlete right here. Beautiful as well. Make sure y'all yeah. follow her, follow her career. She's going into her senior year. She's trying to get that record. Four by yeah. four record, hurdle record. So uh, make sure y'all look out for Kaja Tally. Um, you can follow her on social media. Thank you so much for joining me, baby Neo. We gotta connect in the future. I know I didn't make it to um to convention, but I gotta get up there soon. So yeah. <laughs> well, thank you so much. Good time talking with you. Time to you too, Sydney. Thank you so much. Bye. <laughs>